funny that it's uh, that it's S and implied testing positive or oh. something, isn't it? <laughs> Pull your finger out of your ass. Jeez. This is my first ever football jumper. My three goat votes, I should say. My three goats. My three votes <laughs> for three Charlie. Votes. For Char oh, top of the world, <laughs> mate. What a time to be alive. I look a bit like Nick Bellick from uh, GTA 4, I feel, with this. That could, that could get dangerous. Episode 53 of the Pressure Point podcast. Round 10 of footy is done. We're almost at the halfway mark of the season. Teams are flying. Some teams not so not so much. Um I know your Tigers are, um, they're getting written off a little bit, but very brave, very brave person to be writing off Richmond at the moment. Well, we love that. I love a bit of, you know, a bit of uh, negativity towards the Tigers. It only seems to drive us as it has in mm. the past few years. So I'm still pretty optimistic. We've got some big players to come back, but we'll talk about the Tigers a bit later. I'll save it. Yeah. I'll save it. Absolutely. Well, how was your weekend in general? No, weekend was good. Weekend was good. And, um, Started. Poorly on Friday. But Started poorly yeah. Friday, sadly. Um, but it was, you know, a good occasion. Went out to the London Tavern in Richmond there, watched the game. So that was always good. Good atmosphere there, apart from the fact that we lost. Played footy on Saturday, had a big win. So we'll take that. Yep. Uh, work Beautiful. Sunday. Yeah, so no, good weekend. Love well, it. How about you? Yeah, pretty chill. Pretty chill. Went to the Blues game on Saturday. Um, was a nice day out there. Um, and that's pretty much it. It was pretty chill. So it's... Um, been good just to relax a bit on these last few weekends beautiful so. it's, it's funny that carlton win again and uh you're introing the podcast back to normal <laughs> were you a bit flat last <laughs> week handball in the intro over <laughs> no nah, that's it mate you're back to it this week after a nice win so you'll take that yeah a bit more up and a bit i mean it, yeah it wasn't too impressive um but a win's a win and we'll take it we'll happily take it absolutely um but the big talking points that come out of the weekend is the mro findings they've been pretty pretty surprising pretty um Pretty savage, to be honest. Very, yeah. Just did not expect these um, findings to come down on these incidents. I think they've overcompensated the AFL, and it um, it was on the news earlier as well. And even some um, concussion experts were saying the AFL has crossed the line, especially with the um, the Mitch Duncan tackle there. They got well, the tackle on Mitch Duncan, I should say. Um, they've definitely taken it too far and been over cautious with it. You can't take out a player for a fair tackle. Like that wasn't a dangerous tackle. It was a it was a chase down tackle, which you see every week. It's actually a really nice tackle. We got holding the ball for it. And now you're trying to like, take him out of the game. Yes, it's unfortunate. Um, that's part of our game, though. You're going to get injured sometimes. It's not, you don't want to see it, but you can't pin a player and make him miss two weeks of footy every time someone gets injured mm. when it's an accident. It wasn't a dangerous tackle. But anyway, that's my opinion anyway. I thought it was fine. Yeah, absolutely. Completely fine. Um, I think that'll get thrown out as soon as get, that gets to the tribunal. I can't see Nick Holman getting anything for that. I mean, it's just unlucky. Yeah, that it's is, just unlucky yeah. that that was the result. I'd, it, I'd, I'll be very surprised if something more comes out of this. Yeah. So the other ones, well, the other contentious one was the Lockie Plowman one on Jager O'Meara. Um, obviously, Jager was pretty, I think he was definitely concussed. So that's come out of it. And it was a massive hit. But from what I saw at the game, it looked like Plowman had his eyes on the ball and it was just a fair contest. And it was just unlucky that O'Meara came off second best. That's so. it. I mean, it's another one. I guess it'd be a little bit unlucky to. I think it was if they judge by outcome as they have in the past. You'd think Plowman would miss, but probably a little bit stiff if he does because I thought, yeah, same thing. Yeah, I thought he had his eyes on the footy and it was all fair. Um, but like I said, you know, the result always plays into plays that into account. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. They might even um, downgrade it to one week, but I think we've got a case there um, because. Yeah, just it was no malice, and you get you get taught you're like if he backs out of that contest, you probably be like, oh, what, what's he doing there? Oh, hundred you know? percent. So, That's what you're taught to do as yeah. a footballer. I mean, it's a it's a contact sport. Yeah, it's sad people get injured. It's just part of the game, yeah. though, unfortunately. Exactly. But the um, the right call from the MRO was given Cole Hardigan three weeks for his elbow. I thought you were about Walsh. to say the Marlon Pickett one. That was about to fire up. That's also a correct one. That's <laughs> not correct at all. Um, but yeah, you're right about the Cole yeah. Hogan one. That was, um, you can't throw elbows. From some fan footage as well. How good's that? Yeah. How good's that? Just quickly as well, actually speaking of fan footage, I want to touch on that quickly. I thought this was quite funny over the weekend. Um, I was covering junior football. Um, and the other week we did a game for the St. Mary's football Junior Football Club. And the YJFL actually looked at some of the footage that us at Game Face shot and saw a player get hit off, hit behind the ball. Um, and this guy's missed two weeks now. Now the club's right. turned around mm. and said to the league, we don't want them filming our games anymore because our players just missed two weeks because they caught him knocking someone out. Oh God! So instead of the club saying to the players, hey, maybe don't take blokes out behind the ball, yeah. they're just saying, we don't want our games filmed. So essentially saying, we want to get away with it, keep doing it, but we want to get away with it. 
How wrong is that at that's junior terrible. level? That's terrible. That's what it seems like anyway. Sort of example of that sitting there. Exactly right. I just thought it was quite funny how not, not, not telling the players not to hit people behind the ball, they were just saying, we don't want our games filmed so we don't get caught. Yeah, that's on. probably how Kyle Hardigan's feeling right now. Yeah. Fans caught him on, uh, on, the, on the phone. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I just don't know how that – I mean – there's that many cameras in the ground. How did that not get picked up, that Hardigan one? I'm honestly surprised. I mean, so, I'm sure if they looked, they'd have a camera that might have been on it, but I guess it just got missed. Yeah. So much happens in a game yeah. as well. It's easy for things to get missed, but it was just uh, – Hardigan was, I guess, was just unlucky that a fan, happen, fan yeah. happened to fi- be filming him. Yeah, absolutely. And then the Marlon Pickett one, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, I'm torn between – he went for a tackle, I thought, anyway. And someone said today it looked like he was deliberately going for a close on, but it was in the play emotion. It wasn't that – it was just as he kicked it. So mm. it was he's in every right to try tackle him. Definitely a free kick. He yeah. got him above the shoulder. Yeah. I don't know if he deserves yeah. him. I don't week. know about and a suspension either. Yeah, I don't know. A fine maybe because it was mm. a bit uh, rough. But, I mean, it's, again, a contact sport. Yeah. What do you want him to do? Lightly push him. Yeah, you got to go hard at the ball. So I don't know. I don't think so, but I could be biased. Yeah. I think high tackle um, maximum there. So I think – that should get thrown out as well. Is he going to the tribunal? They are challenging it, aren't they? Yeah, they're yeah, they challenging it. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think there'll be a couple there that'll be just be thrown out tomorrow night or whenever it's, whenever it's on. Yeah, I so, think so as well. Fingers crossed. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's get on to a, onto some of the teams. Uh, we'll start with the Essendon Footy Club. They're uh, they're flying at the moment. Unfortunately, as it pains us to say. <laughs> um, nah, they're, they're they're going great. Credit where credit's due. They're, they're doing some good things at the moment. They've got a good young team. The Baby Bombers are back from 1993. Um, yeah, all things are going well. are coming off a 70-odd point win against North Melbourne. So, I mean, it is just North Melbourne, but they still have to beat them by 70-odd points and put up a pretty good score too. Well, you can only play what's in front of you. Yeah. So if you're having big wins like that, you'll take them every day of the week, whether it's against North or it's against anyone else in the competition. So, yeah, yeah they'll, they'll be very happy with that, especially with the young list that they've got. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we've got a big Essendon supporter that's going to call in tonight to talk about his bombers. Um, he's passionate about them. He's one of my close mates, so he's going to have plenty to say. So we'll uh, we'll get him on the line now. Yellow. Here he is. We finally got him. We had a few technical right. difficulties earlier, but we've uh, we've got you now. We thought you were getting scared. No, never. never. Not after the Bombers win. <laughs> no cold feet today. Uh, now, we are just talking about your Bombers. They had a pretty good win on the weekend, and they've been pretty impressive so far in the first 10 rounds. What are your thoughts on, on the baby, baby Bombers so far? Yeah, we're happy with the Baby Bombers so far. It was... Um, and having a few wins, be above the Blues, be above the Saints, would be pretty happy. <laughs> I was waiting for a jab at Carlton. Right, what, are you, what are your thoughts on that, Marcus? What's your rebuttal? I mean, that yeah, like as, as well as they're playing, like you've got to give them credit. But yeah, being above us, it, it hurts a little bit considering where our expectations this season compared to Essendon's. Um, I definitely would have expected us to be higher than Essendon uh, come round 10, but we beat them only a few weeks ago, so we'll, we'll happily take that. Um, what's, been your, what's been your biggest highlight so far this season? I know there's a lot of good young players. as Quinn dropped something in the background. Uh, there's been a lot of good young players so far. What's, um, who's been your favourite? Yeah, mate, obviously the kids are good. I was a big rap for Nick Cox when we picked him up. The highlights were very impressive and... Um, I don't think he's hit his peak yet. Obviously, he's only a few games in, but CT looks one to watch. And I, uh, I also like Nick, Nick Hind off a half back, uh, an improved version of Adam Starr, I think. Oh, here we go. Oh, well, Marcus was, was getting fired up before the recording this about uh, Nick Hind. He was, uh, he wasn't happy with the comparisons or even saying that he was better than Adam Starr. Do you, is that still a little bit, a uh, bit of saltiness there that Saad left, or n- not at all? Now you got Hind. Well, I don't know. Adam Sard, he runs fast and he kicks it long, but oh. the ball seems to come back the other way pretty quick as well. Whereas Nick Hind, he likes to hit targets, which we like at Essendon. <laughs> Good for me. Sard's in their heads. <laughs> Rent free. Rent free. We love it. Um <laughs> No, nah, Nick Hind has that. Nah, in all, in all fairness, Nick Hind has been pretty good. Um, watched his game yesterday, and he was kicking. He kicked a really good goal in the last quarter, and his um, his ball use is great. Um, so you've done well there to replace Saad. You've done very well, to be honest. So, 
For uh, pick 70 or whatever he got for him, it's, it's absurd that the Saints let him go for pick 70 or something. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. So they've done really well. They're the Bombers. The Saints could definitely use someone like him right now after the loss they just had on the weekend. Yeah, exactly. So uh, what about what about Harry Jones? Are you, did he just re-sign or you just ex- extended him today, I believe? Um, he's had a yeah, flying think- start to the season. Yeah, Harry's got another two years. I think he's signed for. He's looking good, actually. He was... I think he was pick 30 or something a couple of years ago, and obviously he's still pretty skinny, but, yeah, he looks like one for the future, which is good, because apart from Joe, we haven't really had a key forward to get excited about at Essendon for a long time. Absolutely. And what are, you, what are your thoughts on some of the senior guys? Um, obviously, there's a few of those rolling around at the moment. Are you, you liking what they're putting out, or are you thinking the young guys are sort of the ones holding you in good stead at the moment? Uh, well, some of our senior players are senior leaders like Andy McGrath, Standing up, obviously Darcy Parrish has gone to another level. Um, hopefully, we keep Zach Merritt. He looks like he's enjoying his footy, but you never know with free agency these days. And um, I think Dyson Heppel move to the half back line has been a bit of a mastermind from the coaching great Ben Rutten. It's it's funny now, isn't it, oh, Ben Rutten? <laughs> Wait, thinking, could I just uh, could touch on Ben Rutten? Because I remember about round one or round two, you were you weren't happy with him. Well, have you have you changed your tune now? Oh well, he was he was sitting on the bench while we coughed up a forty point lead to the Hawks, and he, he just sat there like John Walsall. But since then, he, he's turned it around. He's gone up to the box, and he's um he has been good. I'm a fan of Ben Run. Uh, he's doing a good job. He's doing a good job. I was just about to say before it's it's funny now that um you know Essendon supporters and I guess AFL fans in general are considering blokes like Andy McGrath, and Darcy Parrish to be senior players when they're still. Fairly young. Like they've still got a lot of footy left ahead of them, but they're considered senior players now, which has to be giving you a lot of confidence going forward, knowing that you've got these guys at such a young age that are already standing up and leading the club forward. Yeah, exactly right. I think our, our list, even though it's young, it's probably in the best spot it's been for for 10 years or so, even though, um, I mean, we've only had four wins and we haven't beaten any top eight sides, but it's a young list, it's exciting, and um, yeah, our, our young senior leaders look to be one for the future. Yeah, uh, just touching on your on your rebuild again. I know, was it end of twenty eighteen? You brought in all these ex- senior experienced players because you thought you were going to win a flag, and you're pretty close to it. And then only two, three years later, you're you're rebuilding again. How has that come across towards Essendon fans? Like, is it frustrating? Is it? I mean, you're all pretty excited now about it, but do you feel like you over hyped your list at the time? You know, back in at the end of twenty eighteen. Um, we had a lot of injuries, to be fair, and at the time, we were making finals, and we had um, Tyson Heppel missed two years, Joe Danaher missed two years, we had a lot of injuries, but um, I don't know, in those years, even though we had a few wins, we sort of, we were beating the bottom teams, didn't really get close near the top teams, and I think even when we made the finals, we were just, we were flogged by 10 goals and we were out early, so, um, I don't know, it was good to get a few of those players in, but yeah, it looks like youth is the way to go at the moment. Absolutely. I think one of the big things in the past anyway was that Essendon were accused of not really having a brand of footy. I mean, you look at some clubs and Geelong obviously play that really slow style of footy where they chip it around a bit more. Richmond play with a bit more of a surge. But a lot of people were saying Essendon didn't really have much of a brand and they didn't have anything to really stick by. But I guess we're starting to see that now and with these young guys that are bringing it out and they're really starting to stick to a game plan. And like you said, you've only won the four games so far, but with the list you've got, it really seems to be working. Yeah, and I think, I mean, in terms of game plan, we had John Worthold who was appointed to sort of take us out past the drug saga period. And then, um, I don't know, I mean, obviously he was a successful coach in like 2006, but the game's changed a lot. And, and tactically, I don't know if he was the man to be putting forward our new game style with the way the game's changing and evolving. Uh, well, that's good to hear as a current supporter. We've just got John Worthold to pretty much look after our coaches. So um, yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's good. <laughs> He's that's David Teague's count. consultant. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It makes my mind boggle when what the Blues do. <laughs> we are, well, we're both equally as frustrating clubs. We are, we are very similar in, I mean, the last 20 years, definitely. Um, but, geez, when we're both up and going, it's um, it's a strong force, and the AFL need Essendon and Carlton to be uh, both be up there. So oh, I'm good with them not being. It's fine. Oh, mate. Imagine, <laughs> imagine when we're both back up there. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, talking about success, do you reckon you guys can play finals? I mean, it, it is a long no. way off, but... 
not this year, obviously. Um, I think we'll probably be maybe three or four wins out this year. Um, but, yeah, hopefully next year. Apparently, we've got a lot of salary cap space, so you never know if you can get a big crowd in and get a member at the next We start looking pretty good with another another year to our young guys. So, yeah, potentially. But not this year, I wouldn't have thought. Yeah, and I think a big thing for you guys this year, I mean, I, I, I don't think you'll play finals either, if I'm being honest, but I think a big thing for you guys this year will maybe be trying to get a scalp from a top eight a top eight side. You know, you catch someone on a, a, an off day, you guys have a really good day, and you get a win like that, and I think that just gives the fans and the players so much confidence knowing that they can take it up to some of the better sides in the comp. Do you reckon, can you see any of those sort of games coming up in the rest of the season? Well, yeah, we went up to... I think we went up to GWS and lost by a kick. We went up to Sydney, lost by a kick. Um, so I think we're we're matching it better with the with the top sides than we were last year or the last few years. Um, so I reckon, yeah, I reckon we're a bit of a, a danger game for some clubs. Like, I think we got the Tigers in two weeks at the G at dream time. You never know. Jeez, you've, you've caught the Tigers at a good time at the moment. We're a bit of a shambles at the moment ourselves. So you've probably caught us at a good time if you uh, if you, if you show up on the day. Yeah, you, like you said, who knows what could happen. Yeah, well, you can't stay up forever, mate. You've won three of the last four flags. So yeah, you can't just polarise every team every week. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's funny. Everyone everyone says to me, surely by now you're just, you know, you're happy with whatever happens. But you never get sick of success, mate. I'll, I'll, I'll keep living it while I've got it. Don't worry. Oh, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> As a bloke who was eight years old when the Dons won the flag, you just enjoy it, my friend. It's fine. If the Dons won one in the next few years, I'll be going bananas. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, don't and worry. Me, me I've been too. doing just that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, um, We'll, uh, we'll run this segment that we've been doing the last few weeks with our guests. It's called The Pressure Cooker, where we'll ask you a few questions to finish off the chat, and uh, we'll get started when Quinn runs the uh, little music. Great sound effects. All right, I'll kick us off. If you had to delist one player on your team, who would it be? Uh, Marty Gleason, unfortunately. <laughs> All right, on the other hand, if you could add one player from another list, who would it be? Uh, if I could add one, we'd probably need a key forward. So maybe uh, one of the King Twins, Harry Mackay, somewhere around there. No, no mm. taking him. Marcus is shaking his head right now. <laughs> <laughs> Harry gets free sign as well. You're, you're paying bloody one point half back flankers and you haven't got Harry Mackay free sign. <laughs> Oh, you've probably got the salary cap to get him as well. Who knows? No, no way. McGovern <laughs> I mean, you can take McGovern if you want, happily. Um, Who, who's doing the contract? Who's doing the contract with Carlton? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It, it's 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 a bit of a farce, isn't it? Zach Williams Boy, no, played his boy. first good game on the weekend, and he's getting paid 900 or something. So, so Dodoro will do something good for the Bombers. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. I imagine. Imagine. Imagine Harry. Go, no, I'm not even going to think about it. Uh, <laughs> Oh, this this question is going to be pretty easy for you, I reckon. Which team do you love beating the most? Uh, well, I actually really enjoy beating Collingwood on an Anzac day. Yeah, uh, that's really good. But I think, yeah, Carlton, the rivalry there. <laughs> yeah, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, I knew. I thought that one was coming as well. <laughs> I'm actually not surprised at all there. And then last one and the most important question of them all: Who is your favourite Pressure Point co-host? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, Marcus is one of my better mates. However, the rivalry between us, Carlton and Essendon supporters, that um, it used to stem to when we played AFL Evolution, Essendon <laughs> versus Carlton. Even sometimes I wouldn't go to sleep after our, our rivalry matches together. But <laughs> it's an intense when game. It to, when it comes to football, I'll say Quinn because yeah, I just can't stand any blue supporter. Oh, my man, my man. I'm two one up now. Yeah. Two one. At in least the you count. didn't sit on the fence. I liked it. Yeah, we had a couple of fence sitters early, a couple of uh, fence stampings in the bum, but I appreciate you uh, you coming up with an answer. So thanks for that, mate. <laughs> no worries, brother. All right. Thanks for coming on, uh, Rhino. It's been great. Appreciate your time and um, all the best for the Bombers in 2021. All right, boys. Thanks for having me. Go Bombers. <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs> See you, mate. Thanks. Well, mate, you got a bit of catching up to do. 2-1 oh, in the count. Fuck. That. From one of my better mates, that is that hurts a little bit, but I, uh, I can I can understand. I can understand if he asked me that question, I'd probably say the same thing. I was you really, know? I actually really did expect him to go you there, like last week. He was, I oh, know Mark's a bit better. I'll go with Marcus, but he 
you know, went against the grain. You picked the, uh, the fan favourite. That's how strong the rivalry is. Jeez, that's... Weston and Carlton rivalry. That's big. Yeah. That's it big. Tears friendships apart. See, I'm going to have to start strategically choosing guests in the next few weeks. Blokes I know will specifically choose me. <laughs> just to just to clear that differential on the count. <laughs> uh, but no, it was good. It was good chat. He, um, yeah, obviously loves his bombers and, yeah, they're doing great things at the moment. So he's only got positive things to say. And um, no, credit where credit's due, though. They're, they're, they are looking good and they've got a good young list assembled there, don't they? Oh, they, they really do. And it's, I mean, they've, they've made us look silly because at the beginning of the year, we didn't give them a chance to win many games at no, all. not at all. I, I picked them for the wooden spoon. Well, exactly right. And that I wasn't mean, even just tongue in cheek. That was like, I just thought that they, they were just, they went to the draft. They were starting again. That's so. right. I thought it'd be them or North or mm-hmm. thereabouts. Yeah. Um, and now they're only one game behind us. They've won four. We've, Richmond have won five. I don't think anybody expected that, especially me. So yeah. they've done well. They've exceeded expectations. And I think all Bombers fans will be pretty happy at the moment. Yeah. They're, they're all up and about. And you can tell the crowd yesterday was pretty big for Essen North game. So they're, they're up and about, those Bombers fans. Um, another team that's in red hot form is the Brisbane Lions. They are. Which you <laughs> know all about. Painful, painful to say, but yes, they are. They're in fantastic form at the moment. They're um, they're red hot, and I called it last week. I said I didn't expect us to go up there and beat them, especially on their home turf. But uh, they came out and they took it right to us. I thought we gave a good fight in the first half. We looked all right. We stayed in the game for most of it. But um, yeah, they're just the better side on the night, and they ran away with it. I mean, how can you stop Reese Matheson though? Oh my <laughs> god, this guy, this guy. Now look, I could be wrong when I say this, um, and, and maybe it was just because of injury or something like that, but. I do a bit of volunteer work for the Coburg VFL club and I did a match report when Coburg was playing um, Brisbane in the VFL and I had Reese Matheson in the VFL as one of the players to watch. This guy was in the VFL three or four weeks ago. How is he now the club's barometer? <laughs> when a v- you know, get out of here, mate. Self-proclaimed. Self-proclaimed. That's, yeah. Well, the Brisbane, Brisbane haven't come out and said he's the barometer. No. He's called himself the barometer. Yeah, I'm sorry. And yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. Look, ma- and maybe I'm wrong, but I have a pretty good feeling that once Chucky Neal's back in the side, they'll be back in the McGill's. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so him and his long hair and beast mode like, can... <laughs> like, I don't mind him like showing aggression and, and being like a bit and showing a lot of confidence and a bit of arrogance. Like I don't mind it, but when you're flinging your head and diving for those high tackles, that's, that's when you can't, you can't be talking like that. Are you a you tough know? guy or not? No. Nah, yeah. That's the thing. I, I don't mind that either. See, I mean, I hated it on the night cause I'm like, get a load of this guy, right? Yeah. I can't stand it. But you look back at it and if I saw a Richmond player doing it, I'd probably be loving it. Like, look at the swagger on this guy. Yeah. Like he, he, it is, it's impressive. And the way he went to straight to duck, he took it to the play. Yeah. Best player he's not scared comp. of anyone. No. But, and good on him for doing that. But then, yeah, don't go flinging your head nah. back and diving for free kicks that's, like Joel Selwood. That's where you lose everyone. And then, yeah. And then I'm sorry to, to come out and then all the good players have gotten their team. Like, I'm sorry. I reckon Charlie Cameron would be more of a barometer than him. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. He'd be, he would be their barometer, wouldn't he? That's what I would think yeah. anyway. And, and you come out on TV and say, I'm, I'm yeah. the team's barometer. Like, come on. do you know what barometer means? A, look it up. Yeah. Anyway, that, that's just my opinion. I'm probably a little bit salty because they got us done. And I'm starting to hear all the memes come back now because at the, uh, the end of this round, we're sitting ninth in the ladder. And uh, this song's been playing a fair bit the last couple of days. We finished ninth again. I'm sick of that song, mate. It's I love funny. That, pe- pe- people forget. I mean, <laughs> Richmond supporters don't, but a lot of people forget because we've been good the last couple of years and go, oh, look at this, look at this. But 95% of my life, that was my life. Is Richmond yeah. sitting in ninth and just missing finals? And then no, it, was, it was a nightmare. So I hate seeing us in that position, but I'm pretty optimistic still going forward. We've got some big players to come back. I think this week, Bolton, Prestia, Cochin, potentially Shane Edwards, he's less likely, but at least those three are more than likely to come back this week. So. Um, yeah, I think we're still going to be all right going forward. We've got plenty of uh, talent yet to come back on the yeah. park. Don't write off Richmond. Um, I'd like to know what your premiership odds are because surely they've drifted a bit. Oh, I, and I wouldn't mind getting on that. I haven't checked, but that they would have. They would low. drift. Yeah, Absolutely, that'd be bad. That'd be pretty awful at the moment. So it wouldn't be yeah. a bad time if you're no, uh, if you're an optimistic supporter. Was it 2019 where you drifted out to almost like was it a ridiculous? Yeah, well, figure, we, wasn't it? Well, like we had an awful through the start to the year. Similar to this, we had yeah. a pretty bad start. I think this is our this is a, the worst start we've had in a while. But it was a pretty bad start in 2019, yeah. um, and everyone yeah wrote us off. So it'll be yeah. a similar situation. The only thing I think this year is, I think it's going to be too hard for us to push back into the top four, which mm. gives us that double chance. And we needed it last year, losing the first final, um, which and it obviously just makes it so much harder to get to a grand yeah. final when you don't finish top four. I think it's probably going to be a bit too tough for us, but who knows if we 
I mean, it's opt- you know pretty optimistic to say this, but if we win every game from here on the rest of the season, then who knows? Yeah. But I mean, yeah, as long as you're not playing at Marvel or anywhere else, you'd be fine. Well, as so. long as we can get our supporters out, Marvel's a dangerous trek, and it's you know it's scary for Richmond supporters. I'm one of the brave few that made it, makes it out. I've been to Marvel twice this year, believe it or not, but um, a lot of us don't want to do it. And with the way the umpires are treating us, mate, we're just such a hard done by club. Oh, God, you're only harming your own. You're only harming the Richmond Footy Club by not rocking up. To Marvel Stadium games. Oh, absolutely. See, I'm actually with everybody else on this because I rock up mm. to those games. I'm yeah. not one of the ones that doesn't. It upsets me. And what else? What The other thing that upsets me as well, and I mean, look, I, I'm the first one to complain behind closed doors about it as well, but the, everyone at the moment, is even Dimmer coming out and they're complaining about the umpires and the free kick differentials and all that. When you post it on social media, the other fan, everyone else wins because it looks like we're, we're, we're having a sook and everyone loves the fact that we're sooking up. And, you know, if you don't mm. bite... Nothing gets said, you yeah. know what I mean? But everyone's biting at the moment. And I mean, I know the ladder came out, I think, after round eight and Richmond were clear on the bottom for free kick differentials. Like, but we do, I, I think we do get shafted a bit. I'm not saying we've lost games because of it. It just makes it more frustrating. Mm-hmm. And on the weekend, again, like, I know Dimmer obviously expressed his frustrations, but yeah, we, we think, I think uh, Brisbane had double the free kicks we did. Does that just mean we were second of the footy a lot? I, I don't know. I don't know what had it. How much to look into it? I don't think we've lost games because of it, so I'm not blaming that. It is just frustrating, though, especially when you're down. I think that's why we've sucked a bit is because we've lost a bit more this year than we're used mm-hmm. to. And then when you look at the free kick count, the first thing you go to is, oh, but the bloody umpires. So I don't like to umpire bash. It is frustrating, but, yeah, it's not it's not their fault. And I think it just makes everybody look like a sook when you use that as an excuse. Yeah, exactly. And it's just cl- it's clickbait. and um, I mean, it's the same with, with Carlton. It's the same with all the big clubs. Um, you know, the fans... Uh, uh, compl- like like to complain. They like to jump up and down about things, which creates more media attention. And that, this is why this is happening. Um, you know, if this was a, a St Kilda who we're about to talk to, uh, we're about to talk about, it wouldn't be you know as publicised as it is for Richmond. No, but just so. it's a, the nature of being one of the bigger clubs in the league. It's mm. just what you're subjected to, and it's. I'd rather be the bigger, a bigger club than, than not. Absolutely. So I'll, I'll take it any day of the week. But yeah, it, it is a bit frustrating, especially when it's your own supporter base because you're just thinking, you're embarrassing the rest of yeah, us. Yeah, I know. No, no, I feel like that as well with the Blues. I know. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Um, anyway. But certainly wouldn't want to be a St Kilda supporter because they are a basket case at the moment. 111 point loss to the Bulldogs and he's kicking four goals for the match. That's so... Terrible. Yeah. I Terrible. mean, they, they'll never expect it to beat the Bulldogs, but not no. not to lose like that. On Mar- At Marvel as well, where they play their best footy. Exactly right. I mean, so do the Dogs. The Dogs do, but, but come you, on. you still put up a yeah. fight. You still put up a fight. That was For a team that was expected to play finals and... Top four. Be in the top four this year. Yeah, so everyone had massive hopes for St Kilda. Their percentage which, is shocking. It's like low 70s. Well, I think they've had five or four or five games this year where they've lost by over 50 points, yeah. which is massive. I know one of them was us. We've beaten by 86. I lost mm. now by what, 111, you said, yeah. on the weekend. So they've had some massive losses. I don't know what to put it down to. I, don't, I haven't watched a hell of a lot of St. Kilda games in the last few weeks just because, well, to put it bluntly, they're not. it's not exciting to watch. Mm. But I really don't know what to put it down to. I know poor kicking hurt last week for them. But, I mean, they kicked 5-3, so they weren't inaccurate. They just didn't have many scoring mm. shots. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they were terrible. They were lifeless. Speaking of scoring shots, the Bulldogs kicked twenty-one yeah, goals, eighteen. Exactly right. They so completely dominated them. Like it was. Oh, did you see the St Kilda supporter in the crowd reading the book? Yeah, <laughs> great. That was funny. That was funny. I mean, I feel bad because you know you, you you we've all sat through those kind of losses and they're not fun. Mm. Um, good on them for not leaving. Yeah. I'm sure the, there wouldn't have been a St Kilda supporter in sight after three quarter time, but good on them for hanging around. But yeah, that's. It's not a good look for the club, and where to from here for the Saints? Yeah, I know. Where, like, where do you? What do you do now? Like, they're not going to play finals. Let's be honest. No, and that's the thing. And then we spoke. We like you said, we spoke about them finishing top four, and that was their expectation. Mm. And they had a good year last year. They played finals and all the rest of it. But where to now? Yeah. Like, or is it just an off year, and they'll bounce back next year? Or do we expect them to? They can't rebuild. No. They've got a young list well, already. They've bought players, like experienced players, for the now. Exactly. So like they don't have a lot of years up their sleeves, do they? No, to, I mean, to, blokes like Dan Hanabry is getting older. Yeah, he, I, got, I can't see him playing a hell of a lot of footy. Brad he's Crouch. He's injured. Crouch. Brad Hill. Paddy Hill. Ryder. Exactly. Ryder, all I wouldn't old. be surprised if he finishes up this yeah. year. I hope he, I like watching Paddy Ryder play when he's at his best, so I hope he plays a bit mm. more, bit longer. But um, I can't, James Frawley, another one. Frawley. You know, like they're, they're, it's there for, for him now. Yeah, like they're all getting on. Like they, 
I don't know what's going on there. It's um, and then you got blokes like Jack Higgins and Dan Butler. I mean, I'm, I know I've picked out the two Richmond guys, but blokes like them that haven't really been performing and almost no. should be getting a look at VFL just to sort of pull their head in a little mm. bit, which is disappointing because you bring in names like that. And even I expect, I mean, Butler had a fantastic year last year. I'm not taking yeah. that away, but this year. It's hard when the ball's not coming into the forward line, but they really have been a bit of a disappointment, you know, yeah. to be blunt, to be brutally honest. Yeah, terrible. And our um, our good mate on this podcast, Richo, um, messaged me yesterday and he said, make sure you slate the Saints on the podcast because they are the worst team in the competition right now. I think that's so, harsh. I think worst team in the That's how passionate harsh. you get. And no, we know no, Richo, I, we know Richo, he loves his Saints. We, you know he loves his Saints. He likes, likes coming on when they lose. So absolutely, we should give him another call. Actually, <laughs> surprise call him. But um, nah, I, yeah, I don't think they're the worst side in the comp because they'll, the thing with the Saints is they could turn around next week and they will show up and have a great day and they have Guess a good who they win. play next week. Who North Melbourne? Oh jeez. <laughs> what? Well, okay. After next week, we'll discuss who's the worst side in the comp. If North Melbourne win next week, then I'm I've got no hope for St Kilda. But mm. I I think Saints will win. I mean, yeah, surely, they surely they win. That they, they think they have to win this one. Yeah, they, they have can't to. afford to lose it. But if Saints show up, the, the players have got, like some of the ones we mentioned, and even their younger guys, they've got some guns. Mm. It's just a matter of them showing up on the day. So if they rock up, they'll, you know, who knows what they can do. But they haven't done enough for me this year to see them going anywhere. No. Yeah. No, they're, they're cooked. Um, and I feel for because because Brett Ratton's their coach and obviously being a Carlton man, Carlton legend. Like I, I want him to do good and it's not, not great seeing him struggle like he is now. Um, that's the only thing I want to see improve from St Kilda is, you know, I want to see Ratton succeed as a coach. But, like, if they can continue this on, he might not even survive, you know. Well, yeah, but that's pe- the thing. clubs are so quick to just kick yeah. coaches out now. So who knows? I hope he gets more of a chance. But how do you go from having a season like last year to this? Uh, they have to pinpoint something and something has to change. Yeah. And whether that's the coach, I'm not sure. That's obviously – People that follow the club more closely than I do will have a much better idea than me. But, yeah, I, something's got to change at the Saints. Yeah, for sure. Well, the Adelaide Crows were in a similar position last year where they were definitely the worst team in the competition um, for a long period of that season. And then they've bounced back and turned it around very well this season. They just knocked off the undefeated Melbourne in incredible scenes at the Adelaide Oval on Saturday. I was about to say, the Crom had a really good start to the year, like surpassed all our expectations, and then they lost the last five in a row, and I thought, well, here you go. They've got Melbourne, there's six in a row, mm. and right back to where we probably expected them to be early on. But I know it was only a point, but to get that one-point win against them was huge. Go Crom. Crazy. And this, how were like, the scenes in that last oh, two minutes of the game. Mental. So I, I went back and you know how the AFL do those, the final two minutes yeah. videos, and I went and watched that. I um, mean, it was... It was fantastic, and I've, I've sort of been one of the people that isn't the biggest fan of Adelaide in the last few years, maybe because of the grand final mm. rivalry a few years ago, but seeing them uh, have that win and, uh, you know, over a team that probably should have been 10 and zip right now, well, definitely should have been yeah. 10 and zip right now, was uh, fantastic, and we spoke about it before with the uh, the umpiring thing, but these supporters weren't happy. No, they weren't. They weren't. Probably fair enough. I think that non-holding the ball decision um, against Ben Keys. Was probably the, the main one, I think. I think that shouldn't that should have been paid holding the ball, and then Tex doesn't kick that goal, and they can probably hold on to it there. The deliberate one, though, that's sort of come out, hasn't it? And looks like Charlie Spargo, it's it's come off him. Yeah, so, so. That, this is the one that bother, when I say bothers me, it doesn't really bit. You know what I mean? It kind of bothers me because this is the one that the AFL has come out and they've said. Um, I've lost my floor. <laughs> my, th- my train of thought now. The AFL's come out and said, yeah, we got this decision wrong. That should have been a deliberate out of bounds. Yeah. But you've looked at, we've seen the other footage now where it's actually come off Spargo's hand. Yeah. And that's why it's gone. So the ball's deviated once it's hit his hand. He was looking for his teammate who was right there. I can't remember the teammate's name off the top of my head now, who, which one it was, but he was right there and that's where it was going. So I, I think that was the fair call. It came off the hand, wasn't a deliberate free kick. The holding the ball that wasn't paid, that should have been. They should yeah. have come out and said that was wrong because yeah. he had, he had almost half an hour there that yeah, he could have got no. rid of the ball and he just held on to it and obviously, like you said, text the goal and they win the game. So yeah. I think that was the wrong call. The deliberate though, I think they got right and the AFL has actually got it wrong by apologising. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. That's um, yeah, that's that's fair enough. But I love it though. If that, if that didn't happen, probably the scenes. Yeah, we wouldn't be talking about how crazy the Adelaide Oval was. Imagine being there. Oh, it would have been mental, especially mm. as an Adelaide fan. I mean, yeah. it's such a um, 
it's a sanctuary there for them if that's the word you want to use yeah. for it they love it down there it's a it's a haven for the Adelaide supporters and Port fans alike when yeah. they're down there so it would have been unreal to be there as a Crows yeah. fan question I have I want to ask you is what are your thoughts the AFL's done it a few times this year what are your thoughts on the AFL coming out and admitting that they've made mistakes in key moments because it's happened a few times now with the Brisbane Geelong game it's happened now and I think it happened a couple of weeks ago as well where it was a last minute decision that wasn't paid or was paid that shouldn't have been and they've come out and apologised I know if it happened to me or if it happened to the Tigers and I saw it, I think it would almost frustrate me more because you know that they've got it wrong already. Then when they admit it, it's like, cool, you've admitted it, but nothing changes and we still lose the game or, you know, whatever, whatever's happened's happened. But I don't know. And do you think it probably puts more scrutiny on the umpires? Cause now people are saying, well, look how many wrong decisions mm-hmm. have made all year. And it puts like, they don't cop it enough. I mean, I, I know a couple of weeks ago I was giving it to them and I've, you know, I've already opened up about that a little bit, but, um, it just, I feel like it opens them up for more scrutiny. It does. It does. Like, what does it achieve? Like, it's not going to, it doesn't change anything, does it? No, unless so. you turn around and say, we're changing the result yeah, of this game. which is not going to happen. You can't do that because you, you that's the thing. You still don't know what's going to happen. They pay that deliberate. He might kick it out in the full mm. and the Crows still win. Yeah. So you just don't know. You can't make it's all that hypotheticals. Decision. Exactly. So when you apologize, I mean, it's maybe a small bit of solace for some of the fans that, you know, wanted the decision to be paid. And at least they go, well, at least we know we were right, but you still lose the game. So yeah. I don't think it changes much and could probably probably be um, left without being said. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Buddy Franklin, he's charging his way to a 1,000 goals. He kicked six on the weekend against the Dockers. He's hungry. He wants yeah, it. He really does. He wants it. It's crazy how good he's playing oh, for, for his age. For his age, for the injury and, troubles he's had. He missed a whole year of footy and he's... He's the he's becoming the buddy of old almost. It's so good to watch. He's like, fantastic to watch. He's um, oh, he's just an unbelievable player. He has to be one of the best of all time. That's I mean, what I mean. Like, he's one of the best of all time, and we're seeing him still playing at a very high level. So we've got to really take it. I mean, not take it for granted. Sorry. Um. So it's 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 great, and I hope he gets gets to a thousand. He probably won't get it this year. No, no, he won't get it. He's he's going to kick 40. I think he's going to 40 goals off. He won't get it this year. Would you doubt him though? (laughs) No, I mean, it wouldn't, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if he did it, but I just, it's not for the the way the Swans are going. Um, He's not playing every game. Some there's sometimes managing him as well. Yeah, it's true. So I don't, I don't think he'll kick 40 more goals this year. 40 goals is a fair amount in any season from the beginning, but he's already, what are we, nine rounds in nearly or whatever it is. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't see him getting it this year. I'm hoping he plays on one more year just to kick it. I'd love to see him yeah. kick a thousand goals, and like you said, one of the greatest players of all time. And we're able to watch him play and appreciate it. Like that's why I was spewing in round two or three, whenever it was. Richmond played the Swans, and he didn't play. I was bleeding because mm. I thought I want to watch it. You know, you want to see these guys out there. And people our age have been lucky enough to see some of you know the all time greats from Gary Ablett, Chris Judd, um, and some of the blokes still playing now. And you know, and Martin um, Franklin. It's just yeah. a privilege to watch these guys yeah. play. So. I want to lap up Buddy as much as I can, and I'm hoping he gets pretty close to the thousand, so it, you know, gives him an incentive to play next year. Yeah, for sure. I hope he plays forever. He's great to watch. Has he reached the end of his seven year deal? Good remember, question. remember when they signed him, and he everyone signed, said he won't finish, he won't play that long. He signed on I in 2014. Yeah, I think he's. It's at seven years. I think he's made it. Yeah, must be. Surely was it they, seven years or nine years? Might have been it? nine. I can't. I, don't know. I can't. It was so long ago. Yeah, now. It was I, a while ago. I hope. I just hope he signs on for one more year, whatever it yeah. is, just to get him. I reckon he will. About a thousand goals. Well, yeah. if he continues this form, he will. Yeah. So we'll see. Well, hopefully he doesn't get injured. Touch wood, he doesn't. And um, you know, no more injuries for him, and he yeah. can stay fresh and yeah, kick that a thousand. I hope it's in Melbourne because I'd love to run out <laughs> under the G and get around him. Yeah, well, I ran on when he kicked his hundred um, in two thousand eight. Jeez, that must have been a bit bittersweet for you. The Fev game as well. Yeah, yeah I know. It was got one of the well, things I'll never forget running on. For Buddy Franklin when he kicked his hundredth goal, but then when Fev was on ninety nine and the atmosphere in that ground was something you will never be able to um describe really. It was crazy. Um and then Alistair Clarkson decided to flood the black flood the back wow, I can't even talk. Flood Alistair the, <laughs> Flood the back line. <laughs> flood the back line. Sorry, I'm no, just, I, I get choked up about I it. I was as so well. caught up in the moment. Um, I get choked up about it as well. I, I only think Alistair Clarkson has not copped enough flack for that for what he did there. Terrible. That, that's honestly disgusting. Mm. I know Hawthorne sports be like, oh, now nah, stuff him, you know, it's Buddy's moment. That will never happen again. The two play- well, let alone, It's going to be rare that one player is going to kick 100 in a year, let alone two on the same night. Oh, 80 night. points up. That's well. the thing. If it was a close game, mm. fair enough. You don't want to lose, especially because of what was coming towards final. They won the flag yeah. that year. It, you were 80 points up. Let let um, Fev kick his 100th. You know, he kicked, what did he kick seven that night? 
Yeah, in the second half. Yeah. Mm. Let the man kick. You know what I mean? Don't or no, don't no. let him, but don't double team him, triple yeah. team him. Play one on one. If he kicks it, he kicks it. Let the fans have their moment. You've that you've stolen a moment from football there. And that that's a yeah. um it's a criminal act towards the game. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um well speaking of all time greats, Ben Cousins. The man made we, a return last week to our local footy. He did, he did. We forgot to mention it on last week's podcast, but it was great to see him back out there. I mean People have mixed opinions on Ben Cousins. Um, you know, he's done some pretty interesting things in his life, um, to say the least. Well, that's um, a nice way of putting it. Yeah, depending how you look at it, he's obviously made a lot of mistakes in his life and all that. And, I mean, seeing him play local footy, that doesn't mean he's obviously, you know, turned the page and he's on the right path. But I hope that's where he's headed towards. And it's just good that he looked healthy again. I mean, he looked he looked as incredible as ever. He yeah. was <laughs> jacked. Yeah, um, very good. Yeah, so I'm really happy for him to see him back out there. I um, hope he's turning his life around because, you know, it doesn't matter who it is. You don't want to see anybody go down that path. So hopefully he's on the right track. But um, best good luck to him for getting back out there. Yeah, absolutely. All the, And, yeah, I hope I hope he has turned the page and, um, yeah, he's enjoying life again and, um, and on the straight and narrow because, I mean, a man so young as well and um, had such a privileged life being an AFL player, especially in Perth as well, was the king of, Perth. The Prince of Perth. Prince of Perth is what they were calling him. So, um, yeah, let's hope he, he gets back to that and has the help around him. But good early steps anyway. Exactly right. And it was a real shame, I guess, with Ben Cousins because, like you mentioned earlier, one of the greats of the game, greatest of all time, but I guess it's always a little bit tarnished now because mm. of this. And it's sort of not – he's not looked upon the same as someone like a Judd is and all that because yeah. his career probably did finish that bit early and, you know, obviously everything else that happened with the drug use and all the rest of it. So – it's a bit disappointing, but yeah, hopefully he can turn things around and um, you know put his life back on track. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's move on to round 11. And it all starts on Friday night between the Western Bulldogs and Melbourne, the top of the table clash at Marvel Stadium. This is going to be an absolute ripper. Well, this is going to be the game that separates the two because at the moment yeah. it's only percentage. So this will make one team a game clear of the other and we're in for an absolute belter, I reckon. Um, yeah. I still think the dogs, I think the dogs are uh, at home, especially at Marvel Stadium. They work it so well. And it's hard to tip against a team that just won by 111 points on the weekend. And then a team that probably should have won or definitely should have beaten Adelaide. So yep. but they'll be firing and ready to bounce back. But I'm still going to give this one to the dogs. Yeah, I think dogs as well, just because it's that Marvel. They're just too good there. Way too good. Uh, Saturday afternoon, we've got Collingwood and Geelong at the MCG. Geelong quite comfortably here. They're starting to hit some really good form. Yeah, Geelong are playing fantastic footy at the moment. And, I mean, I know Collingwood only just lost to Port Adelaide on the weekend. If anyone watched that game, it was one of the worst games of football. So, I'm not get, yeah, I can't give much to Collingwood at the moment. So, all Geelong for me. Yep. Uh, Brisbane and GWS at the Gabba. Can't see Brisbane losing at the moment. They're just on fire, especially at the Gabba as well. Not with beast mode, the no, barometer. Yeah, Mate, geez, as long as Reese Matheson's out there, you, you, no one's going to beat the Lions this year. Nah. So, yeah, Brisbane for me. <laughs> Uh, St Kilda and North Melbourne at Marvel I actually don't know <laughs> oh god St Kilda please they, they need this they drop this oh boy we'll get Rich Owen one next week absolutely <laughs> no he had to, oh, yeah we keep getting him one after a loss the poor guy he's been through a lot this week too yeah he has he has yeah he uh, shout out to Rich yeah. I hope you're recovering well mate broken nose and um, bit of a nose job after getting a knock in footy so um, yeah yeah He's, he's not in a great way. He's uh, not had the best of weekends footy-wise and, and and he's just everyday living life. So um, all the best, Richard. And hope you're recovering well. I think he's out of hospital now, but he's got a nice little uh, bandage around his nose and um, he might have a new nose when that comes off. He's Michael uh, Jackson-esque. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> well, no, I was, I was actually going to I was gonna go north just to go against the grain and, you know, Go out in a limb there, but for Richo, I'll go Saints. I think they're going to yeah. bounce back, and uh, they need to win this. Yeah, they do. They do. Saints for me. Uh, Gold Coast Hawthorne up in Darwin Saturday night. Jeez, that's a interesting place to play. We saw it last year. They played there a few times. It, it was, was yeah, a couple of games there last year. I think Dreamtime. Carlton played there against Carlton Gold Coast, there. and it was very um, very humid and slippery, and which yeah, is what you can expect up game. there. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I'm giving this one to the Suns for that reason because I yeah. think they're used to those slippery conditions playing in Queensland a lot. So I'm going to give it to them. Yep, Gold Coast as well. Uh, West Coast Essendon at Optus. I just can't see yeah, them winning at Optus. West, West Coast at home are just too good. Yeah, if so, it was in Melbourne, I'd probably yeah. I'd be closer to tipping Essendon a bit. Not for the Optus yep. Stadium advantage, definitely West Coast for me. Yep. Sunday we've got Richmond and Adelaide at the MCG. 
Jeez, can't this, drop this the Tigers. No, I? I was about to say this is like we're like the Saints in this situation. We have to win this one. I mean, we're the heavy favourites, and if we get the players that we're supposed to get back in, then I think we're uh, we, we'll win this one. But um, yeah, I'll tip us either way. But we need we need to win this because we're five and five right now, and we're sitting out the top eight, like I mentioned yeah. earlier. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I think you, there's no chance we'll drop this, um, especially at the G for that Adelaide Oval. Maybe who knows? But, nah, I think yeah, you'll win quite easily there. Uh, Sydney and Carlton at the SCG. Um, geez, we, we play at the 320 time slot on a Sunday a lot. So you love this time. We're very you? used to this time slot. Um, but we're on the road this week. This is a huge game for both teams. Well, it's sort of make or break in terms of playing finals, isn't it? Yeah. I think if we drop this, it's going to be very hard. Um, but if we win this, then we're right back in the mix. So it's tough away from home. I don't know. I don't know. I think. Well, we've got Jack Martin coming back this week, so that's going to be a big in. He's huge. Um, but then we don't know what's happening with Lockie Plowman as well. So it's a tough one. I'm, I think Sydney just because they're there at home. I can say I was only going to go to the Swans for the home ground advantage and they have been in good form this yep. year. But yeah, it's a, it's, this is probably going to be the, one of the better matches of the round, I reckon. Yep. But yeah, no, I'm going to have to go Sydney. Yeah, me too. Um, final game of the round, we've got Port Adelaide and Frio at the Adelaide Oval. Oh, Port. I mean, Freo, the, Freo are only good at home. Well, that's what I was about to say. If it was at Freo, if it was in WA, yeah. Port don't play well away from home yeah, either. These so. two, they they hate playing away. Both these teams. Exactly. So they're going. I think Freo are going to have a hard time, especially with the Port Adelaide crowd down there. They're not yeah. going to have an easy day down there. And um, yeah, Port will get the win. Yep. Yeah. yeah, Port for me as well. All right. Well, that is round eleven. That is the halfway mark of the season. Can you believe it? That's come really quick. Ridiculous. That's flown by. Ridiculous. Um. And yeah, they usually say after round eleven, round twelve, the ladder doesn't change too much. So, Jeez, I hope it does. <laughs> Could be another ninth finish for the Tigers. Oh, don't do that, mate. That'll <laughs> break. It'll break my heart. I know I've seen a lot of success recently, but finishing ninth will kill me. I'd rather finish. I'd rather finish towards the bottom than ninth. It would. It would break my heart. <laughs> oh God, it'd be great. Flashbacks for what. 10 years ago, a decade ago, when this used to happen all the time. Mate, so. less than that. Less than that. <laughs> less yeah. than that. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, but no, that, that is that is us done for this episode. Um, make sure you leave us a review. Subscribe to us on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. Um, yeah, give us as many reviews as possible. That's what helps us um, get better every week and helps us get the podcast out there. So please leave a review if you can. Um, we'd like to thank our sponsors. Yes, we do. A million Ma. So thank you to them for sponsoring us. As always, they're doing a great job with the things they're doing at the moment. Yeah, and RetroJet Prince Go Ends. Woo! Special mention to Enns, actually, before we finish up as well. It was his birthday yesterday. So a big happy birthday to Enns and, uh, you know, obviously one of our big sponsors of the show. So happy birthday, mate. Hope you've had a great day. And uh, as you said, go Enns. Go Enns. Woo!